నమస్కారం డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం విద్యార్థిని విద్యార్థులకు స్వాగతం హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ a very important and very interesting and thought uh, thought provoking lesson on fresh water pearl culture india is having the bio wealth of nearly 50000 fresh water mussels among these 50000 only 3000 are useful for the pearl culture activities these three species are Lamellidens marginalis and Lamellidens coreanis and uh, Parisia corrugata. Here you can see the Lamellidens uh, marginalis species. All these freshwater mussels are comes under the phylum mollusca and uh, class bivalvia or pellicipoda. And these black headless and dumped creatures on the earth which comes under bivalvia when get irritates it gives out the most precious germ that is the pearls or the pearl is an icon with cool luster and soft nature body and while giving out the pearl to outside the only way is we have to sacrifice the animal this is really a thought provoking sentence that is we have to sacrifice the animal in order to get the pearls from inside the body cavity and now we'll switch over to the second part of our uh, discussion that is uh, the pearl culture here we have got one resource person from uh, sifa uh, orissa bhuvneshwar orissa he is a former director of Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture, Dr. Janakiram. And Dr. Janakiram will continue his lecture on freshwater pearl culture. My young friends, welcome to the exciting world of pearls. Pearl is such a fascinating subject to all the people you, me and whoever walks on the street is interested about pearls. Let us try to unravel about pearls, their culture procedures and methods involved. Now I would say freshwater pearl culture which is just about dawning in the aquaculture horizon of India, freshwater pearl culture is akin to cash crops of land based agriculture. The aquaculture pearls is a different cup of tea. Let us see what it is all about in the coming few slides. Then coming to the economic importance of pearl culture, the farming of pearls in terms of value is one of the world's leading aquaculture industries. Here I am quoting Dr. C. Richard Fazler, who is the economic advisor in the field of aquaculture to the United States of America. He said during 1991 in one international symposium, a catfish grower may smile when he can get 80 cents for a pound of fish he produces. And a shrimp raiser, raiser means farmer, will be happy with about six dollars per every pound of shrimps he produces. A parent farmer on the other hand will receive an average price of about 27,000 plus US dollar for a pound of his product. Now you can see the differential returns from base food crops to semi cash crops to real cash crop like pearls. It is reported 
the demand for pearls in the country in the current international markets is well over 3 billion US dollars. According to official reports, I underline the word official, India is spending more than 300 billion rupees every year for import of culture pearls from China and Japan to meet the ever growing market demand in the country. And we are now today talking about freshwater pearl culture and its advantages. Freshwater pearl culture's advantages in terms of commercial scale availability of natural stocks of pearl mussels in easily accessible habitats, wider area farming even in the non-maritime regions of the country, operational easiness in the management of freshwater culture environment quite unlike open sea absence of natural fouling, boring and predatory organisms and overall the cost effectiveness of the operations. So, realizing the scope and importance and potentials of inland pearl culture, the CIFA Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture located at Bhuneshwar, Orissa, where I have worked till recently has in recent years developed an indigenous technology of growing pearls. None of the people here had been to China or Japan nor anyone came from China and Japan to teach us about the technology of pearl culture. Welcome to CIFAR Technology of Freshwater Pearl Culture my friends. Then you may ask me what is the base technology involved at CIFAR. There are six basic steps involved in the gamut of freshwater pearl culture technology. Number one is obviously the collection of raw material the biological material, collection of muscles, then pre-operative conditioning, then implantation of nuclein grafts, then post-operative care of the implanted muscles, then pond culture of the operated muscles in the natural pond environment, then at the end of the culture period harvest of the muscles and pearls for utilization. These are the six steps which we will discuss a little more in detail as we sail along into the world of pearls, pearl technology. Friends probably may ask me what are the candidate species involved in the CIFA technology of freshwater pearl culture in our country. These are the three species which are commonly available. Actually if you look into the freshwater bodies throughout the country there are more than 50 species of which the first group Lemonless marginalis is a typical stagnant water species and then second one is an amphibious muscle called Lemonless coreanus and the third one is Parisia corrugata which is a, a riverine or stream habitat, habit, habit muscle. These are available throughout the length and breadth of the country. Then the after I just mentioned among the six steps of the freshwater pearl culture technology, the obviously the most important one is a collection of muscles. Live muscles around 8 to 10 centimeters in shell length, obviously they weigh around 50 grams and above in wet weight are collected from the natural habitats and transferred to laboratory in split bamboo or plastic containers like this. This is quite useful for short distance transport. In case long distance transport involving more than 24 or 48 hours are involved, in such a case the individual muscles are wrapped with cotton, wet cotton or wet cloth and transported over to the operating house. So, the desiccation is minimized, there is no injury to the muscles, the mortality will be almost minimum. Then the second step is pre-operative conditioning. A muscle which is freshly brought from the field is having powerful erector muscles still operating. Hence it is very difficult to operate these muscles. Hence it is required to keep the muscles in crowded conditions for about 40 hours, 48 hours in this sort of plastic or cement tanks so that the resultant toxicants by the uh, respiration and metabolic activities of the muscles 
make the animal slightly supple in preparation for surgery. Then the next most important and crucial step is the pearl muzzle surgery. The pearl muzzle surgical procedures can be divided into three methods mantle insertion method, mantle tissue implantation method, then gonor implantation method. And what are the products? In the case of mantle cavity insertion method, you get shell attached half round pearls or design pearls. In case of mantle tissue implantation, where it is non nucleated or nucleated what are they? I will come to a little later. The products are unattached irregular to small round pearls, which are seen in the mantle tissue because the implantation is done in the mantle tissue area. Then finally, the gonad implantation method in which the products are again unattached regular slightly larger round pearls. These are the three different methods. I can say mantle cavity is by far is the easiest method and the success rate is more than 75 to 80 percent. Mantle tissue implantation method is also relatively simple and we are not touching the any vital organs. Hence, the trauma on the part of the animal is the minimum. So, the chance of getting more than 70 percent of pearl formation are indicated in mantle tissue. However, the problematic implantation method is a gonad implantation where we are tam tampering a vital organ like gonad. Hence, the chance of infection and rejection of nucleus are more. I would say the percentage success of pearl formation in this particular method is around 20 25 percent. With experience, it can be brought up to 45 or 50 percent, not beyond that. Then coming to the different methods which I just mentioned, mantle cavity insertion method. In this, simply a nucleus is inserted into the mantle cavity or the live muscle. You know what is the mantle cavity? These animals are bivalve creatures. They have two shells and the two shells underneath have a skin like structure called mantle. This mantle covers the soft parts. So, the space between the mantle tissue and the shell is called the mantle cavity. This is where a nucleus is inserted and then in due course of time the nacreous layer of the shell is secreted over the implanted nucleus and a shell attached pearl forms. Here you can see a half round pearl which is still attached to the shell and here you can see a design pearl a Sai Baba which is which was again attached shell. This can be cut and removed from the shell and made into a pendant later on. Then coming to mantle implantation, <coughs> there is a two procedures that are followed non nucleated wherein only a graft I will explain what is a graft a little later again is implanted in the mantle tissue of the recipient muscles or with a small nucleus in the mantle tissue of the recipients along with a graft. In case of only graft, unattached irregular small pearls are produced. In case of a small nucleus insertion along with the graft, we get slightly small round pearls in this method. The maximum diameter in our Indian muscles in this method is about 3 or 3.5 mm in diameter. Then coming to the next complicated method which I said gonad implantation. The products are unattached regular round pearls. Here you can see this is a gonadal area. This is a foot. Here you can see two pearls. Then here are the gonad implanted pearls produced in our Indian muscles. You can see one pearl which is almost measuring more than 8 mm in dia. This and this are two large pearls which you have produced. Normally, I would say the average size is about 4 to 6 mm in diameter. Then I just mentioned that I uh, will explain what is a mantle and what is a graft. I mentioned mantle is a skin like structure underneath the shell following the contour of the shell or the soft portion of the animal. This mantle is very important because it generates, regenerates the shellar portion of the animal. 
In fact, if you look into the cross section of this shell, it has a brownish outer periostracum, middle calcite layer and innermost mother of pearl layer which is very shining. All the three layers are structured by the mantle tissue and the mantle is attached all along ventral margin following a line called pallial line. The mantle at this area of pallial line contains few billions of live cells which can secrete the innermost shining layer called nacreous layer. In fact, a graft a this mantle tissue is cut all along the pallial line like this and the both sides are trimmed and from which small pieces around 2 to 3 mm square graft pieces are made from the donor muscles. Each graft piece I would say is a key note in the orchestra of biomineralization of a pearl. A pearl is nothing but calcium carbonate. I can explain about pearl in three different scientific languages. Physically a pearl is a round shining object with a core and with a hardness of about 3.5 on Mohr scale and with 2.7 or 2.8 specific gravity. Chemically it contains calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate in nature can exist both in organic and inorganic forms. In the organic form it can exist as valerite crystals, aerogonate crystals and calcite crystals. A pearl contains only aerogonate portion. Hence, the pearls which contain aerogonate more than 90 percent have jewel quality. In the inorganic side of uh, calcium carbonate, it can exist as calcium carbonate, calcium hydroxide or calcium bicarbonate which we are not concerned. However, when you treat a pond, this comes into picture because the muscles do get their calcium resource from the ambient waters that is the calcium carbonate that is provided. <coughs> then you can see here the grafts that are collected from the donor muscle are implanted in the recipient muscles. Probably at this point of time you may ask me what is a donor muscle and what is a recipient. When we collect the muscles I mentioned 8 to 10 centimeter size muscles obviously weighing around 50 grams in wet weight are collected. The largest of those muscles constitute donor muscles which will be sacrificed and mantle ribbons are taken. The rest of the muscles will be the recipient stock of muscles. Here in the mantle tissue implantation method small pockets are made in the mantle tissue on the posterior ventral or dorsal aspect and the mantle grafts collected the donor muscles are inserted. Here you can see five implantations that are already made. This is the left wall a similar implantations can also be made on the right wall of the mantle lobe. Obviously, we can get nearly 10 pearls from each muscle, muscle through this method. And the third one is a gonad implantation method in which the mantle the muscle is slightly open without causing injury to the ligament, anterior post retractor muscles and the operating zone is cleared, a small incision is made at the point where the foot ends up towards the gonad that is towards the dorsal side. A small incision is made, a pocket is cut with specialized instruments and the mantle graft implanted. After the mantle graft is implanted, a nucleus also is implanted in close proximity to the mantle graft that is already implanted. So, the success or failure depends largely on experience, expertise and also health of the muscles at this crucial surgical stage. Then comes the post operative care. The muscles after the surgery are very weak. If you transfer them directly to the pond environment, it causes mortality or also it results in infection and also death of the muscles. To prevent that we keep the implanted muscles for about 10 days in this sort of small 
cement tanks. Each is having about 200 liters of water treated pre-treated with chloramphenicol at 1 to 2 ppm. The idea is to provide a broad spectrum antibiotic to prevent any fungal or bacterial infection. So, that the wound healing takes place, the wound that was created while making incisions while implantation is done here and towards the seventh or eighth day green water is added. So, that the animal resumes normal feeding acti activity and becomes ready by the tenth day for transfer to the pond environment. Then comes the last phase or penultimate phase the pond culture. These muscles of these implanted muscles after post operative care are taken in bunches like this and suspended in the pond environment at a depth of about 0.5 to 1 meter. Normally the ponds the pelicature ponds will be about 1, 1 to 1.5 to 2 meters in depth. Perhaps you may ask me what are the physical chemical requirements of pond water or pearlicultured pond water. I would say the natural ponds having runoff supply of water or canal water supply or riverine water supply are ideal than the bore well water supplied ponds. Then the water must be slightly alkaline, not very alkaline nor acidic. I would recommend the pH should be around 7 to 8 or 8.5 at the most. Then the ponds should harbor some green alga like chlorococcum, chlorella, sanidespus, etcetera. Not the blue green alga like microcystis or the dinoflagellites euglena. They are dangerous for the pearl bearing muscles. So, the ponds without toxic algal blooms and also devoid of macrophytes, larger aquatic plants like Pistia, Salvinia, Nilumbo, etcetera. All these things should be avoided in pearlicultured ponds. So, these are, these are the basic requirement, requirements as far as the physical chemical conditions are concerned. The muzzle bunches are kept at about 0.5 to 1 meter depth. Obviously, I mentioned 0.5 to 1 meter because in winter where the temperatures are very cool, they can be kept at 0.5 meter depth. When the summer, when surface water gets heated up, the muscles can be brought down to 1 meter low instead of 0.5 meters. So, the adjustment can be made by using PVC platforms or bamboo platforms. Then coming to the nutrition, fortunately these muscles are mucoid filter feeders. They cannot accept any artificial feed for their growth or pearl production. This is an extremely important management advantage in pearl culture. If you look into catfish culture, prawn culture or fish culture, the major costless input is feed. Here it is totally avoided except we keep this sort of cement tanks all along the pond bun and fertilize. So, since our country is a tropical country, the water becomes green mostly with chlorella or chlorococcum in about weeks, week to 10 days time and this algal enriched green water is periodically led into a pearliculture environment. So, that the alga forms the best choice natural food for the muscles that are going to give us the pearls. Here you can see four different colored pearls produced by the same Indian muscles, Lemonless marginalis and Lemonless coreanus. You may ask me how the color is achieved. There are simple methods available, biological, chemical and physical. In the biological methods, we vary the donor muscle. Instead of making a homograft, we make xenograft. Say for example, from Parisia corrugata to Lemelus marginalis, the graft is taken. The color will become, will become totally different. Similarly, by varying the donor muscle and the recipient muscle, we can produce different colored pearls. That is one approach. But then there are biological limitations. We cannot produce all the colors available with this muscle, with this uh, uh, available species. But then, fortunately, the muscles have low 
what they call immune system response. Hence, we can use different donor muscles for different pearl production. The other methods are chemical methods. We can use certain dyes which makes the pearls permanent coloration. These are the normal pearls. Here you can see different colored pearls by using certain chemicals and these chemicals are not washed out either with alcohol or with water. They are permanent. The third method is a physical method. By using a, a particular dose of gamma rays and uh, timing, we can make the same white pearls totally black and the black pearls command highest market price. So, by simply following post operative value addition procedures, we can enhance the value of pearl several times either through biological means or chemical means or physical or uh, physical means. I will just briefly touch upon the advantages and plus points from our country side. India's strategic location in the trade route in Southeast Asia, traditional marketing environment both at Bombay and Hyderabad, conducive warm climate, imagine China and Japan which are temperate or cooler areas where it takes more than 3 to 4 years to produce a pearl, but in India it takes less than or sometimes about 1 year only. So, we have conducive climate. Then vast resources of fresh water with abundant stocks of natural mussels and importantly the availability of teeming rural artisan farmers are some of the advantages for development of inland pearliculture technology in the country. This is a symbolic uh, representation. I just mentioned our country has been importing pearls to the tune of about 300 million rupees officially. Obviously, I wish that all of us can join hands and train the people and make the country or flood the country with our own produce, our own pearls. Manayi Unnata Vidya Karikram Alapai, Me Sande Halu, Salahalu, Suchanlu, Pampicha Vansna Chennama, Director, Audio Visual Production and Research Center, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University, Professor G. Ramire Dimark, Road No. 46, Jubna Hills, Hyderabad, 500033.